What's up? We're back at it again with another web application security video. So, okay, this time I'm going to actually show you something that is really, really, really important to understand, and that is chaining vulnerabilities. All right, so I'm going to first start by showing you a cross-site scripting vulnerability that allows us to steal session cookies. Okay, yes, I know I've done that. I've, I've already done that. But I'm going to show you how we can leverage that in addition to cross-site request forgery. So this is going to be part one of the video. This one's going to be more of just setting the stage, showing the cross-site scripting. Part two is going to be chaining that with cross-site request forgery and painting the picture of just how big of an impact that this can be when you have two of these type of vulnerabilities chained together. And uh, yeah, hopefully you'll learn something and you'll like this one. Oh yeah, and uh, hit the like button. Okay, let's go. So if you've been following the channel for a bit, you'll know that I like to do real hands-on technical demonstrations where I can. So let's just dive right into that. I'm here using a machine from Hack the Box uh, called SecNotes. And this isn't a video, it's not like a tutorial walkthrough write-up of SecNotes or anything like that. But it is a really cool web application, super vulnerable and, and really awesome for basically proving the point that I'm making today. So to begin, we need to first have an account. So let's just sign up real quick. And I'll just use username of demo, password of password, and we'll sign right in. So then we'll actually use that to log in. Sweet, so we're in, and once we log in, there are just a few options. We can make a note, change a password, sign out, contact, and whatever. Let's see what happens when we make a note real quick. I'm just gonna say hi with a note of hello. We'll hit save, and we can see, okay, cool. We've got a title of hi and a note of hello showing up right there. I'll go ahead and delete that note. What I like to do anytime I have input fields like this, just as part of a web app pen test, I want to first see, okay, well, can I inject my own HTML code? And doing this is really easy to do. I usually just do H1 because that's like for a header. And so then I could do something like that. And, you know, maybe I'll just even copy and paste it into both. Maybe this one is vulnerable, that one's not, and vice versa, right? So I'm going to save this and check it out. So right away, Boom, we get nice big capital, well not capital, but large bold letters that say hi. That's a great indication that we had the ability to go in there and inject our own JavaScript. And if you ever aren't sure, you can come in and just view the page source and you can control F for what you typed in. Uh, so here we are. We see, yeah, I was definitely able to inject that and notice how none of these special characters get encoded at all. This is awesome for an attacker. Um, okay, cool. So we know we can inject our own HTML tags without any sort of encoding. So the next step is, can we inject JavaScript? Can we actually do a script tag that maybe just pops a quick proof of concept alert that says XSS? You know, and I can throw it into both just in case we hit save. Bam, check this out. So we definitely have the ability to inject our own JavaScript and get cross-site scripting. Cool. Now, what type of cross-site scripting is this, right? Well, this is a great example of stored cross-site scripting because we're not having to, you know, there's no like parameters here in the, in the URL bar and we're not having to take a link and send it to anybody. We create this note and anybody who browses to that note is gonna get hit with that payload. Well, how can we get malicious with this? Let's, instead of making it do just an alert pop-up, what if we say, okay, let's do a script, and this time, let's do something like alert uh, document.cookie, and we'll close that out. Let's just see if we can even get access to the session cookie. We'll hit save, and we actually have an internal server error. I'm gonna try to resend, I don't wanna resend it. Let's just try to go back to, what was it, home? Uh, yeah, home.php. Oh, that went to Google. Cancel. Okay, check it out. So we got a weird error. It didn't like something, but we definitely did still get this to pop. I wonder if maybe I just forgot to close, close it out properly or something. But yes, 
we do have access to view that that actual session cookie for this user press ok here press ok there cool yeah everything looks back to normal and we got the ability to pop that alert now i can i use this add-in here called cookie editor and you can go in and view the details of your own session cookies and all that stuff but if you hit show advanced the reason why this worked, the reason why we were able to view that session cookie is because this flag right here, HTTP only was not set. If the web application sets this flag, that's telling that that's telling the cookie, hey, look, you can't go and talk to anything that's not HTTP. You can only talk to HTTP only. <laughs> so if JavaScript comes knocking on your door and is like, hey, show me your value, we're, we're not going to show them anything. We're not going to actually let JavaScript see your contents. So by having this enabled like that, that could be not a prevention of cross-site scripting, but a way to mitigate uh, cross-site scripting attacks that try to steal session cookies. So that's just something important I wanted to talk about while we're here. Okay, so let's try taking this further. Consider a payload like this, okay? So what this is saying is we're obviously injecting our own script tag. We're doing our own JavaScript here. And I guess I'll kind of center this a little bit more. Um, but we're saying, let's do a document write. This is basically going to create a request, an outbound type request for us. And we're using an image tag. And we're saying, okay, for the image, go out to this address right here. And this address came from my internal, well, I guess it's really my VPN interface. I'm on Hack the Box, right? So you got to connect in over a VPN. So I just came into my box. I said, oops, I did IPA. And I got an IP of 10101444. So in, in the real world, you would probably, you know, specify like an external publicly routable domain like badsite.com, right? But in my case... We're totally cool with 10, 10, 14, 44. And then I made up this, this random, you know, parameter. It doesn't exist. I don't actually have anything on my system that it's going to call down to. Uh, but I did that to kind of have like good, like, I guess, organization. And then we're saying, okay, pull down this image that's at this location, but also add in your document cookie as part of that path. So that way it'll basically issue a request out to this address that contains the document cookie as part of the URL. That's awesome, right? Because as long as we have control of this, we can sit there and we can listen to requests. And as long as we're listening, we'll see a request come in that contains the session cookie. And from there we've stolen their cookie and hopefully can hijack the session. So let's copy this payload. And to, to actually listen to the incoming request, I'll do a netcat in VLP on port 80. And so we're just waiting. We're waiting for someone to talk to us on port 80. So now we'll come back into here. We'll make a new note. We'll paste in our payload. And I will say, oops, as the note name, we'll hit save. And check that out. Okay, we had a lot just happen right here. So as soon as I hit save, it took us back to the home page. And when it did that, it automatically tried to load that note that we just created. And in the title of the note contained that payload. And when it did, we actually received a request, a get request here. And here's that XSS parameter that, again, didn't exist. But now we have the document cookie. We've got a cookie name of PHP sesh ID, and we have a value. So we can take this. And if I were to sign in, by the way, if you guys aren't using Firefox containers, highly recommend them. It's just Google uh, Firefox containers, and you'll find the add-in but basically allows you to sign into multiple accounts in different browsers without actually like having, it lets you sign into multiple accounts in different tabs without having to use different browsers. So for example, I'm logged into one account here on this tab, but if I use a different container, now I can go in and I can sign into a different account even though I'm in the same browser. This is also really helpful for avoiding cross-site scripting attacks. Um, or sorry, more so with avoiding like cross-site request forgery. That'll, I'll explain why in a sec on that. Um, but here we go. If we were to try to log in, obviously we already know the demo user's password. But let's pretend that we didn't. We can just use the session cookie. So we've got a different session cookie than he does. But I can come in here and I can grab that session cookie. We'll replace our value with his. We'll hit save. 
And now what happens if instead of login PHP, I just try to go straight to home.php. Check it out. Now we're logged in as demo. We didn't need to enter a password or anything. We just took over a session completely. So look, I could stop here, but let's think about this. In reality, would this ever happen? Would a user ever go and create a note that would then go and exploit himself? It, it, no, no. I mean, there'd be no reason, right? If he already had the ability to create a note as that user, why would he waste the time trying to use cross-site scripting to steal his own session cookie? So the real impact of this, again, we still haven't really demonstrated much. It's not really very high considering this whole note feature is private. Now, if these notes were being posted in a public area where other users could view them, there we go. That's awesome, right? A payload like this would be perfect because then we could steal the session cookie of any other user who views our note. But I'm making the assumption this web app keeps everybody's notes private. So up to this point, it's not really a big deal. But that's where the next part of the video comes in. This is when we can leverage cross-site script, sorry, cross-site request forgery, often known as CSERF, to post a note on this user's behalf. So we're actually doing it for him. And well, what if we made the note contain a malicious JavaScript payload that sends us his session cookie, right? So if you want to see that, if you want to see how chaining these two vulnerabilities together can really create a, a much larger impactful issue, check out the next video. I'm going to have that one coming out here within the next week, and I really hope to see you guys over there.